Hello and welcome to the October 17th Select Board meeting. All members are present, plus town manager, town clerk, town assessor, no members of the public. Let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, approval of the meeting minutes from October 3rd. Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. First public comment? Nothing? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> <Are> you sure? <laughs> I will close first public comment. We have a public hearing uh, for the November 7th town referendum uh, election. Well, Does anybody have any questions or statements about the town election on November 7th? Oh, you do. Oh, right. Please right. come nice. right forward. Name and address. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yes. Terry Wright, 96 Cemetery Road. Um, I just want to invite all of you to our um, BCM video contest evening on Friday. We're going to be celebrating um, Media Day and uh, awarding prizes. We're going to start at 6.30. We'll have um, water and popcorn and all those fun things, and we'll show the videos that the, uh, have been submitted and then award some prizes. So I'd like to invite all of you to uh, join us on Community Media Day. Thank you. I think Terry jumped in the reports and committees. Yep. Yep, <laughs> I think she did. We were talking about the election. Anyone wanted to speak about the oh, election? You missed the public comment. That's yeah, you missed the public comment. So it's okay. <laughs> public, public, reports public comment, kind of falls public under hearing. Yeah. Um, yeah, one so word. Can we just ask the town manager to clarify the uh, concern by a couple of citizens regarding to whether or not they can set up in the lobby during the election? Uh, yeah, I mean, his Historically, we've had um, groups that it's approved certainly the, the town clerk and um, the Legion and Burke for Lifetime and the library are more than welcome to, nothing's changed there from what we've been doing. So. You know, I spoke to the Legion and told them they can have space in the lobby. I have the library, Berwick for a Lifetime, and the Legion. Great, so there's no... Yeah. The rumor out there that there's they can no longer do that is incorrect and they should just contact you. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And the election is eight to eight, November seventh. And the articles can be found at the town website. There's a couple of spots on thoroughmain.org. You go to I want to view public notices or go to town clerk elections. There's also an elections tab on the front page as well. I believe you can also come to the town hall and see the sample ballot and stuff, right? Yes, they're posted. You're posted at town hall, the post office, and the library. And uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but when people do set up outside the the voting, they're, they're not supposed to bother people coming in, but only people going out? Or is that what it's supposed to be? Only if they're petitioners. If they have a petition to sign, it's when the voters are leaving the polling gotcha. area. But okay. if someone wants to talk to the library before they come vote, that's fine. As long as they're not influencing voters on the election. Yep. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, I will close the public hearing. Please come and vote. Um, all right. No reports of committees. No department reports. Uh, no appointments. Uh, town manager report. Heard from the playground company, New England Recreational Group, today. He has a crew that will soon be ready to mobilize for installation to begin in November. Okay. Early November, end of November. Well, the the timeline they gave was um, end of October, early November. Okay. Just because my, my concern is now all of a sudden we're going to start battling frost during the day if it gets to the end of November Absolutely. and we can see that start to be a thing and then now we're telling the public, okay, yeah, end of November and it's going to be maybe spring <laughs> real right. quick. Yeah. It definitely shouldn't be spring. We don't want to mm -hmm. hold on to that stuff Correct. for a, a half a season or whatever, you know. 
along the same lines, Libby Scott is ready in a similar time frame. It just it may make sense to do all the base paving and the final paving in the springtime. That's something that I'm talking with Josh and we're talking with Libby Scott. Does it make sense to put the base layer down in November? It doesn't make sense to mobilize once and do it in the spring. Um, I wanted to get the board's opinion on, um, I've, we've discussed this in a few different iterations about a ADA ramp at the back of the auditorium. This is the area where there's direct access to the auditorium. Um, it's towards the back on the Eleanor's Way side, and that would be just a, a backup for if the lift is down or we don't have power. The, the challenge with the back door is that I don't, it's not wide enough for an electric wheelchair, things that are really wide, but for the regular wheelchair, it would, it would fit. And the, we're waiting on, um, I heard back from the lift company today, and we're still waiting on the inspection. And we've, um, the lift company's talked with the inspector, he's talked with the, the chief inspector, so we're hoping to hear back. I should hear back from the lift company tomorrow with an update on that inspection date. You're just talking about a physical ramp, like movable, removable, or? Uh, I think it would be permanent and maybe okay. install ramp at the back of the auditorium. There's something that we've talked about the last five years, I think, yeah. when Steve was first around, you know, trying to figure out what to do to get access in there. Um, <clears throat> it uh, be the, the, the doorway just outside here, actually, is where we're talking about. Um, is as James said, is the the uh, the existing exterior door, I believe, is just under 36 inches, which is ADA mm -hmm. no requirement. Um, <clears throat> so whether we'd have to do something with the door or not is one of the questions. Uh, we had talked about putting uh, a lift out there also at one point, and um, you know, so you could just come in and then lift up to that area is the problem that I've brought up in the past is the access to it mm -hmm. is you know there's no parking there except for on Eleanor's way and having to make an accessible parking area with a pathway getting to there could be problematic unless we change Rochester Street and put parking out here which we've talked about several times you know, putting some parallel parking spaces along Rochester Street out here next to the um, town hall. Maybe designated handicaps. Exactly. So they would be here. Well, it, they, they would be at least one designated handicap, but also just you know, more access, more space for parking. Is if you look at the traffic patterns over there, um, you know, people coming down Rochester Street and then turning off of Ellen Way to go down to the square. Um, you look where the traffic pattern is, and, and it's down the center of the road. They don't break into two lanes until you get to the Bridge yeah. Street intersection. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's plenty of room on the side to put some parallel parking there. Um, it's just a matter of engineering it to get things to work in there. We had talked about doing cutouts on the on that side to like to, extend the, yeah to basically block so people don't think that it's still part of the road, you know. Right. Right. But the 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 uh, Town works people, they don't like cutouts very much. So it's, you know, there's there's drawbacks and benefits to everything. Um, I think the main question is, you know, if the door is an issue and what the overall cost would be. If you're able to get some general information about that, it, it, we could, you know, put it on the agenda and have, like, further discussion sure. about it. Yeah. If okay. we're going to put money into it, we want to make sure that every wheelchair could fit through it. Yeah, that's you that's know? what I'm thinking. You know? Like, what's, right. what's the point of having an ADA-compliant ramp if we don't have an ADA-compliant ADA door? So, you know. Okay. That is complete. <laughs> for today. Are there any questions for the town manager? <laughs> No, I think just in regards to that, to try to look at the whole, see what we would have to do for the whole project, too, whether it's extend the sidewalk out there or, like Tom said, you know, what parking looks like, just so we have the whole picture, too, because putting a ramp there is great, but 
they're going right in the grass. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's, we're kind of you defeating the purpose there, it, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. What, what I'm picturing is, is the biggest issue is, like, snow. Like, if it's yeah. winter and people are trying to get in there, you know, yeah. how much issue is that going to be to clear off, to get out, to get people into nope. the ramp, off the ramp? So. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Well, as James said, it would only be used, you know, as the secondary ramp. Yeah. It wouldn't be the Correct. main entrance. But as you said, we need to make sure but, that it is accessible. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it is good from a safety perspective, too. God forbid anything happens where we can't get right. back to the main entrance. Right. There's, there's that exit for everybody. Right. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, Sec board communications, I have none at this time. Approval of counts payable. They're way over there. Oh. Way over there. No problem. All right, we have a payroll warrant dated October 12, 2023, in the amount of $79,001.81. Payroll warrant number 24 from October 19th, in the amount of $82,488.60. And accounts payable warrant number 25 from October 17th, in the amount of $1,841,300. $185.04. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. All those in favor? And just for the record, the reason this <coughs> one is so big is we paid our taxes to the county and the school. School. Uh, so that accounts for more than half of that yep. of that of that yeah. amount. All right. Uh, new business, 2023 municipal valuation return. Uh, my name is Paul McKenney. I'm one of the assessors. Um, so this is a yearly return that we're required to fill out uh, for the uh, uh, main revenue services. It, it's kind of a review of all our total assessments, uh, the exemptions that we've granted, any um, uh, tree growth or farmland, special use you know, properties, that type of stuff. It's a, it's a report just to let them know uh, how they're going to reimburse towns uh, you know, for the state. Budgets. So I guess I'm here. It needs to be signed. I'm just here to answer any questions if you have any. Um, most of it comes from the tax commitment that uh, we proved earlier. The other, most of the other stuff is just informational or a breakdown of you know the different exemptions or tree growth from and that sort of stuff. Do you see anything in these uh, in the valuations that uh, raises any concerns for you? No. Um, in comparison to last year, I, can, I always compare it to the previous year. They were very similar. Um, I think the biggest thing we saw was that jump in the um, uh, the Betty properties, the business equipment tax exemption, and went up a little, you know quite a bit this year. So that was the only that was the only other. Thing. Everything else was pretty standard. Uh, we did certify at the 85% ratio, so exemptions and tree growth rates were all would decrease another 5% from 90% last year to 85% this year. Once we do the reevaluation as of April 1st of 24, then those will go back up to 100%. How does this compare to other towns in the area? Any meaningful comparisons there? Are we ahead, behind, in the middle? No, no, I think... Um, uh, as far as the, the assessment, the sales ratio, what's going on here is similar to what I do in Kittery and Agunquit. I mean, there's a little more water influence over there than there is here, so, you know, those properties are a little different, but the, the regular normal properties are going up around, you know, 50, 60 percent overall from the last five years or so, and that's about what we're seeing here. Do you see, do you foresee us having to make any major changes next year? No. No, no major no, 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 tax no. jumps or changes? No, I think, well, the tax rate will have to drop significantly if their values go up 50%. Mm -hmm. If nothing changed in the budgets, um, you know, any all the budgets, then the tax rate theoretically would go down to 50%. Mm -hmm. I mean, typically that doesn't happen exactly. There's always an increase in the budgets, you know, 2 or 3% or so. But um, it, about a third of the people see a reduction in their taxes. A third stay about the same and a third increase. And I think, you know, we're on course to, to 
to that same that same ratio. Any other questions for Paul? I've, I've had some people complain about the, the stabilization program uh, that ended. You know, the <laughs> state rescinded that. I've kind of directed them towards the tax fairness credit program that's available through the state of Maine. Uh, I'm still waiting to get more information from Maine on that so I can get something out there on the web or, you know, on the um, PCTV or something like that so we can let people know that they need it. What was the name of that program again? It's the tax fairness credit program, and it's distributed through Maine Revenue Services. Um, they've given us some <coughs> general requirements of what people need, but they haven't given us anything in writing yet. Okay. I'm kind of waiting for Maine Revenue. I'm sure they will do it, but I haven't heard anything yet. Any other questions? As uh, Paul said, uh, this is not something we need to actually vote on. It is what it is. We're just basically just uh, approving the report of uh, evaluations. Um, if there's nothing else, you're all set. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You, you too. too. All right. We have the updates to the personnel policy. The 100-page personnel policy. <laughs> <laughs> I had Always a fun read. This discussion with Betsy the other day, and she just proposed that we uh, postpone it until the November, November 8th meeting. We had a discussion um, about it and wanted to make some revisions before we reviewed it, just to have a, a document in a better final state. Okay. Um, pr proposed ARPA allocation. So tonight I am asking to allocate $40,000 to Memorial Field Projects from ARPA funds. So ARPA funds, um, some of the COVID relief, relief money we received about two or so years ago. Um, we've allocated it two different times. Uh, just allocating the different um, different items. In the past, we funded premium pay for COVID. We funded the underground oil tank replacement, engineering for the major stormwater project, and fuel and heating assistance. Um, what We've already allocated money towards the construction of the stormwater project, which is actually a million dollar project, and we're waiting on HUD funding to fund the rest of that project. Um, we have some stormwater engineering, a match for another grant. So the, for this $40,000, um, asking to reallocate 13914 from the stormwater project construction. Again, that remaining amount will be paid from a HUD grant. And the 26086 comes from previously unallocated funds or, or simply interest that we've gained by having that the funds in the account. And projects we have upcoming from Memorial Field, we've got qu quotes to improve ADA accessible for the fence off the Suiza Street entrance, um, add an emergency gate for the 71 Sullivan Street side to get emergency vehicles in, soundproofing for the pickleball tennis court, <laughs> the fence, the paving, the painting, um, another way is drainage. So we have the drainage that gets the drainage off from the playground. Um, right now, the, um, our, the, our contractor is doing the drainage that gets it away from the site. And it also is preparing us for the splash pad to be able to tie into down the road. So it's pre preparing us for that. So can you tell us how much... Um ARPA funds we were originally allocated and how much we spent at this point? We were allocated, um, it was about, um, just doing some quick math, about 858,158. Okay. And how much have we spent so far? Or how much have we allocated so far? We've spent just about um, 
313374 Some of that was allocated, not spent, but most of that, most of that amount has been spent. Okay. So um, follow-up is how much, uh, how much ARPA funds uh, remain un uh, un unallotted? That would balance, that'd, be, that'd zero out the balance okay. for ARPA funds. So, so there's none that's left over that we are potentially going to lose by not... Correct. Okay. Yeah, and because okay, that was going to be my follow-up was like this yeah. expires if we don't use. Yes, it yeah, does. yeah, yeah. Does it expire? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the the we have five hundred forty-five thousand in there now that will accrue some interest. So I might come back. There might be a thousand or two that accrues an interest that we might you know be able to reallocate. But but we're not going to lose it because it's already allotted for the project. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. We we have a certain time frame to. Allocate it, and then we have a certain time frame to spend it. Gotcha. Okay. I'll make the motion that we move thirteen thousand from the stormwater project and twenty-six thousand eighty-six dollars from the interest on un allotted amount to the recreation project. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. CMP poll permit corner of Cranberry Meadow and Worcester. 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 On the, Are they moving it? Yeah, I'm not sure. New one. It's a, on the poll permit. It looks like it's actually a new poll for the development next yeah, to you. Yeah, well, that's what I was uh, curious about. But it's like, but it says Cranberry Meadow. In the Worcester. corner, yeah, I know. But it's, it's, you look down on yeah, the map, on and it lists it as to serve the new road for the subdivision. Yeah. Well, I see, I don't understand why Cranberry Meadow comes in because it's not even close to Cranberry Meadow then. Right, it says 150 feet plus or minus, and that says new mid-span pole. I just don't know what a mid, mid-span is. In between two other poles, basically. Are they going to put like a... Uh breaker or something up on Transform that mid pole <clears throat> they, they must probably be, i mean they're, they're doing power lines right now on the new private road that they've built yeah, they have the poles there. up and they're doing stuff but i, I mean so it looks like to me uh, is they're ad adding the pole on the other side for a tension pole you know, yeah. because you can have the lines coming off at 90 degrees you know they put the pole across the street to take the tension of the cross lines mm. yeah. I mean, I have no problem approving it. And I just, just, yeah. I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it off the top of my head. If it had just said Worcester Road, I'd have been like, yeah, they're putting it in across the street. So yeah, that's, bring what, the power that's what got me was the corner of Cranberry. Yeah, the Cranberry or, Meadow part is what is what throws me off because it's, I guess it's like closer to Cranberry Meadow Road than Pine Hill Road. Says, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, a starting point, but yeah, the only road it's on is. <laughs> but but <laughs> by my reckoning, it's closer to like I don't know a thousand feet from yeah. the, from <laughs> from Cranberry Meadow. They dropped a zero. I just say I, just, I, I missed this um, one Fresh here. Yep. It looks like it says it's fifteen hundred and, and one feet. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that, okay. that's closer to your thousand. That's feet, what then. I was thinking. Yeah. Go. Okay. So there if it go. is fifteen hundred and one feet, then that would make sense. Yeah. I read it as one hundred and fifty. Yeah. That didn't make sense. I don't worry about any of that. My power is all underground, so I don't. Yeah. It's fifteen hundred and one. That's what it says on the on the okay. second page on the third page. Yeah. There. Plus minus. I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the poll permit for uh, Worcester Road to serve the new uh, subdivision. A second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Painless. <laughs> All right. Uh, no quick claim deeds, no abatements, no public for a second public comment. No executive session, other business, non-agenda items. Does anybody have anything to add? Um, maybe we should just uh, remind everyone about the Halloween recreational event. That is true. That. Trunk, or, Trunk treat. or treat. Thank you. Couldn't think of the word. Do you remember what day that is? I believe it's the 28th. Yeah, it's, 20th, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the like 29th. the Saturday or Sunday before Halloween. Saturday. Yep. Yeah, yep. So. And people should park on the other side because the lot... Closest on the other side will be closed off, right? What's the street? Um, so the event is in the Sweetest Street, and I That's think it. people street. can park in the 
Um, so it's just, uh, it fills up quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I know last year we were using the Wilson Street, you know, for the park and ride. Yeah, I just there. remember last year we were right on the corner, and everybody came down there to park, and there was no signage. So we you know, were just putting a sign saying they should park over on the other side. They can. Yeah, so, I think the Sullivan lot will fill up quickly. Yeah. Trunk or treat is on the 28th. Regular trick or treating is on the 30th, I believe. Yep. We'll be out there. Um, dress warm. We don't have a meeting again until November 8th, the day after Correct. the election. Right. Please come to the election. Please vote. Please make your voices heard so we know what's, you know, you can participate in our wonderful town government. Please tell your neighbors so everybody knows <laughs> yes. to vote. If you have, if you have an elderly, elderly neighbor that doesn't have a phone or the internet or TV, let them know that there is an election happening. Absentee ballots are available now, right? Yes, yeah. they are. And I do have a request. I wasn't, I was hoping not to have to close customer service on the 7th for the election, but I do now because some ballot clerks would, could not make it. So I'm requesting to close customer service on 11 7. I'll make a motion that we close customer service on November 7th. Second to motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to sign on the door to remind people to vote Is when they come in no? and do something. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm too tired, I can get all the way up there. <laughs> all right, so customer service will be closed on November 7th. There's an election going on November 7th. The next select board meeting is November 8th, same time, different day. Anything else? Trunk and treat is the 28th. Okay. Regular truck and treating is on the 30th. Right. And um, have a good night. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> good night.